Right, hello everybody. Welcome to my third game in the DBBC World Cup qualifier, the German German Blood Bowl League. Um, this is six round of Swiss um, with basically normal NAF rules, standard NAF rules. So I've gone for the standard Wood Elf team of tackle strip leader to dodge. Uh, won the toss, chose to kick. So we're in we're in chase cam, looking at it from Largo's point of view with his undead. Uh, he's gone with an absolutely standard undead setup of show sure hands, block, wrestle, ghouls, tackle and guard whites. Um, I chose to kick because I think, you know, with the two mighty blow guys and the tackle, he's got a good chance to get me down players. I'd rather defend with a full 11, try to turn him over. And then, you know, if I'm down players in the second half, I could score early, make it 2-0 and win. That is the uh, that is the idea. Tis Kara Schweinsteiger instantly. And yeah, he gets he gets to hit the tree, which is uh, unusual for Khan to be uh, <laughs> to be two diced. I obviously decided not to. Not to use stand firm so I can strand one of the mummies is the idea. I think you played this quite well actually because, like, the temptation it looks like I could I could split the team, doesn't it? And the temptation would be to like run around and try to do it, but I think he's he's made his team just wide enough that um and this screen here and stuff and this screen here and like you know, double screen screen two double screens means that I can't really get around to split his team in two, which would be the obviously the ideal scenario for elves when they get a kick like that. So I can't really stop him caging up. So uh, I felt pretty bad. <laughs> so just just blitz a dude and uh, and stay where I was basically and let him cage up, because even if he does cage up, I can always leap in and one dice him. At the end, you know, as, as sad as that is, um, you know, there's about a sixty percent chance of it working a leap and a one dice. Um, I thought that was basically why I relegated myself to on turn one. Because I thought he did quite well. I put this guy out because I thought, obviously, if he if he if he sticks a zombie on him, it makes his defense, it makes his protecting the ball weaker, and I can just dodge away on twos anyway with a reroll. So he pretty much can't do anything about him, but it also means that he's got to keep his the back of his cage in place at all times. Got a scoring threat if, if I get lucky. That's strange having the guard behind, isn't it? Maybe he just miscounted the squares. Obviously, you'd want the guard in front, not behind there. I would have thought. Or maybe not. Maybe that was all right. Greeds the three... No, he doesn't greed the three dice blitz. The three dice blitz was a both down. <laughs> so I had to re-roll it. <laughs> um, yeah, after that failed stand-up. But that's the thing is, is mummies don't get to make too many hits, do they? Because I can dodge away, basically. Or in this case, just punch them. Yeah, because this tightened it up, so there's no real point in me trying to blitz the cage here. I thought, obviously, the screen of the mummies. I just thought I'll knock over his mummies, basically. Just punch things. I was a bit sad that I got the both down because obviously if I power him, I can put push him into the tree. And uh, if I power him here, I can push him into the tree and get him away from my guys. But unfortunately, I got him stuck on stuck on two players instead of instead of on the tree. Um, but you know, it was okay knocking down both mummies. He 
gets a foul in here, I believe. Yeah, he's committed to it now after after basing. And now he's got the guard in front, as he should. And there's the slight there's a slight chance of running around the back here, isn't there? If I can knock him over and stuff, or knock him down. Vague chance of getting through the back way, but not a lot. Doesn't get sent off, and yeah. So I've got this guy, you know, I'm, I'm keeping him out of range of the tackle guy a little bit. He'd have to GFI to hit me with tackle. That's 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 why he's standing in the square he's standing every time. And... Uh, you know, you had to base him to, to get the assist. Because I just really wanted to hit a goal. Obviously, they've got no Apo and their armor seven. Um, yeah. Punch the mummy with a tree. Just try to shore this up a little bit. Failed dodge here. I didn't think this was an important dodge, but I thought seeing as the leader, um, I should use I should re-roll it anyway, because obviously if I didn't re-roll it and he got knocked out, I'd feel really bad. So I made two dodges, roll the ones on both. That second was really annoying because I really wanted to move him around here um, to stop him getting the assists on the tree. But couldn't. But luckily for me, only pushed him, which kept keeps the tackle locked down somewhat. And yeah, this was funny. He he, he apologised in chat. Oh no, he didn't. No, no, just a knockout. Just a knockout. That's fair enough. So yeah, this this here is basically as loose as he's been with a ball in the whole game, and it's not it's not very loose, is it? It's not very loose. This uh, this cage, but. I thought there was enough of a chance um, that I would go for it, even though he made that. Even though he made that dodge out. Yeah, I went for this. Don't know whether I should. I don't know if it was the right play. I don't know if this block was the right play that I did first either. But never mind. Um, so tree, tree block to make that a two plus to get past. If it would have power, if it'd been a push, I would have changed strategy. Um, I could have. I would have probably gone for the surf uh, had I not got the power there. But now I hit with him. Maybe I should have hit with this guy. But never mind. One dice without a block is very risky, isn't it? Especially with what was to come in the turn. But had I used my reroll again, I would have changed strategy and probably just try to surf this guy. But here, the, the 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 guy at the back gets into the cage, and then do the two plus through, and the leap. On the one dice pal. Classic. <laughs> Classic Wood Elves. And I mean it was a good bounce really because there was a there was a few bad squares, a few decent squares, three good squares. And then there you go, because that this side was a little bit unprotected, wasn't it? It it didn't it wasn't that unprotected, but it was a little unprotected. Especially with the moving that tackle away. Um and yeah, I just did the potato because I thought even if he even if he knocks me down, um I've got the movement and the agility to uh, to respond to it better than he can, don't I? So like, there's plenty of ways that you could get two dice in the ball with it, especially with it just being a catcher, but there's no real, you can't get comfortable, can he? That's the thing. Feels a GFI. But gets the makes the pickup without a reroll. GFI and a reroll without GFI and a pickup without the reroll was uh, was good for him, wasn't it? Pals me bludger. 
I was, I was very sad about that because that was absolutely huge. Although uh, maybe he's pushing the wrong square. I think maybe he's pushing the wrong square. If he pushed him here, he could have dodged through with a ghoul that way. As it is, he's got to go around the other side. Um, but I mean, it was okay, wasn't it? Huge, huge take route there. Had to had to make that that roll to get these guys through. Yeah, no, I, I, I really don't like punting usually because, you know, he had to knock me down there, didn't he? If if I punt and I and I, uh, I fumble or anything, it's really bad. I'd rather just people have to knock me knock my guys over. So a double GFI, I think I needed to hit the ball there, or at least one. But manage the power. I mean, it was strip anyway, so I needed the push to get the ball. But a power was a nice bonus, wasn't it? Brucey bonus. And there you go, his whole team now is... <laughs> Is is almost cut off. I wasn't going to re use my last reroll on that. It would have been really nice to have got the screen out there, though. But you know, now his whole team's stranded, pretty much. Um, and even if he gets the ball here, he's in a world of hurt, isn't he? I mean, I must say, I, I instantly write off um, punting the ball usually, and there's probably times when I should punt, but I don't. Um, because I just hardly ever consider it an option. I mean, I, I don't think Largo really did anything wrong. It was just a slight weakness, wasn't it, there, the turn that I got the ball. And obviously I had to get lucky with a 60% to, to leap in and one dice pal him. Um, so he made a nice little cage here. As if he was gonna just dodge and pass it or something, but does the one dice blitz, gets the power, was a bit unhappy about that. But then he gets incredibly unlucky, one in nine to the pickup, and puts himself in prime surfing position. So that was that was horribly unlucky there to fail to fail the pickup as he did. I probably should have put the catcher here as well. I don't know why I put him there. Not, not dead. <laughs> it's good, I guess. But now it's uh, it's pretty plain sailing, isn't it, for elves at this point? That's the drive because he just doesn't have. I mean, he's got he's got a wrestle and dodge, but he doesn't have most of his players are agility four and movement agility two and movement four or three, aren't they? So he's got lots of he's got lots of crap players in this spot here. <laughs> that was a great stun. Stun the dodge wrestle guy. I did the 2D here. I could have taken the both down to unroot myself and maybe kill his ghoul. But I really just wanted to get this catcher around to make things a bit more secure. But yeah, now with that out of rerolls. It's looking, two turns left, it's looking incredibly grim, isn't it? He's got to get somebody in scoring range as well. Or completely give up hope. I think blitzing that guy, he's almost completely given up hope anyway. But then what does he do? So he's given up on the score completely. Fair enough. Can't blame him for that. <laughs> when, when I've got the when I've got the ball completely screened off and and just two pluses to make it a cage. Two pluses with re rolls, but I mean, obviously, any of these failing would have been pretty bad. Any of these two pluses with re rolls failing would have been pretty, pretty crappy. But that's why the first one marked the tackler, so that the failure state wasn't as bad if the others failed. Oh. 
And so it was, <laughs> you know, he's not actually in the cage, is he? But still, it'd be a four plus five plus, and he can't reach. That's the, the important thing, isn't it? Getting away from the goal with Wrestle was his best chance to hit me. So he'd have to make a, a six plus six plus to hit, coming from the direction he was. So he gives up. He gives up on trying to stop the touchdown and goes for a foul, which is absolutely, absolutely fine. Jim Fowl, <laughs> get banged on. I just make a three dicer here because I probably should have hit the ghoul, I realised. After I made the three dicer on the guard or the tackle, whichever one it was, tackle, because yeah, to protect the dancers, I realised I might have been better off. Oh, I just made a two dice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I could have two dice the ghoul. That might have been better, mightn't it? Armour seven uh, without regen. Didn't matter with the way the dice rolls went. So yeah, one nil, one nil on on the opposing drive is obviously perfect. Well, <laughs> not if you're in our arena, you would like to be four nil up. But you know, stealing the ball and going one nil up is pretty perfect, isn't it? And now receiving. Um, I think he had twelve, three, six. Yeah, so he's still got eleven. Oh, down to 10, which is okay, isn't it? Ten's absolutely fine for Woodies. Um, so at this point, I'm happy to score whenever I can score without rolling dice or minimal dice. Because if I go 2-0 up, I've won. Um, pretty much. Pretty much, uh, if I go 2-0 up, I've won. So it's really, it becomes really hard for him now. Because he's got to stick his mummies out here on the sides. Because... He's got to defend against a quick touchdown and a long touchdown. And it's just, it, you know, it's obviously a nightmare, nightmare scenario for him, really, being 1-0 down on his own drive. Because how do you defend against Woodies when they can score at any time and be happy? <laughs> that, that's another reason why I like kicking with them. Because if I'd received, I would have wanted to stall this out at the end of the half without really knowing what's going to happen. I think the fact that you've got more information now well, I've got more information now. I know that I can just score at any time. Makes makes the offense easier. Um, so yeah, my my idea is to blitz the air ghoul there. Obviously, show hands, so makes him defenseless. But then he gets a blitz. Uh, but again, I've kind of got the screen behind, so it's not so bad if he was to blitz somebody and just get a ghoul in. Gets a three dice block, and he takes the both down. Um, <laughs> A little bit greedy there, wasn't it? I'm not sure that was the right play to take the both down on that on that three dice block, but never mind. That's what he did. Turn one, take root. Classic tree man. Yeah, pushing the right square, good. So yeah, get the get the hit on the uh Defenseless school. And I thought about caging, but again, I don't. I really don't like caging on the LOS. A lot of people cage with their LOS players, and it just makes it too easy to get swarmed. I think with any team, not just elves. So rather than caging, caging in here, which I do see. A startling amount of people do, which is, with the bash team would be cage up there. I just made an extra extra screen and st stood here. No, stood there. I would have stood here. I could take it back. <laughs> Maybe I counted these squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I think there would have been better actually. But just one square difference, isn't it? It's the worst, worst slime in here. And he stood up. He stood up his uh, his mummy here, and I was like, "Oh man, oh man, I can just uphill surf him." And then he ended his turn. And I'm like, "Well, with leaving this hole, once he moved him back, I can actually make this a one dice, maybe even a two dice if I if I'd committed more. I could have committed more to make it a two dice, but then that would have exposed the ball a little bit. Um, I didn't really want to expose the ball." 
So, <laughs> Re breaking the rules of, uh, of surfing people here. I went for the surf. Yeah, it'd have been really risky to make it a two dice block in the first one because this way, if I power get him, to put him to there, so he's out of the way. Um, if I'd made it a two dice block, I'd have had to have another guy there and the ball carrier there, and then like a power would have just given him a hit on the ball. So I was happy to make it a one dice. Obviously, got lucky to get the push on the one dice. Um, and then the two dice surf, and <laughs> he's down a mummy. Is is pretty? It was pretty worth it. As I mean, it wasn't very. It was kind of risky making a one dice block, obviously, but. Um, and then these two GFIs, I wouldn't have re-rolled if they'd failed, but it worked out being great because, I mean, I think I moved this guy to the wrong square. I think he should have been there. So I made a couple of GFIs, but he could have put some pressure on if he'd blitzed this guy and, uh, and got through, but making those GFIs shored it, shored it up. So I was, I was pretty lucky there, actually, to make those two GFIs. Because, yeah, if I'd failed one, he blitzes here and, and swarms through. But then if he swarms at any point, that's the thing. This is the nightmare for him. Because if he if he ever overcommits, I can just break away and score, can't I? And then he's he's lost. Whereas if he, if he, if he, if I had received in the first half, he could have swarmed through, knowing that if I score, he's got the time to score back um, and make it 1-1. And he'd be happy with 1-1. But now he can't be happy with 1-1 <laughs> because he's already losing. So, yeah. Interesting. Safe moves first here. Outrageous. This one isn't so safe though. Block without block. But I like that it was feeding into the tree. And I uh, like to hit a goo with tackle, of course. Had to come back and screen because of this goo. And two two Ds. Have to make this one first because him going down is pretty bad. The failure state of him getting knocked over is horrific. Whereas this guy getting knocked over isn't bad. So I had to make that one first. And had to re-roll it when it failed. I like that I like that uh that this guy would have been basing two. But obviously with a with a KO, he's only basing one. So yeah, re real nightmare for him having to defend this. I can't, I can't criticize him at all because there's just nothing. There's no good way to defend against elves who have the freedom of being able to score whenever they want. Is there? I mean, it's going quite hard in here, four players. But then that just mean, makes me be able to move over, doesn't it? Move around. Can help <laughs> nice whole team here. And I can just move my whole team around. Didn't want to, didn't want to risk a one in thirty six. That's very that's very conservative, isn't it? Not not risking the one in thirty six after that. But you know, is what it is. Use a reroll there. Controversial, down to one reroll. Uh, but none of, them, none of them had dodge, did they? I should have moved that guy first. Oh no, but I couldn't move him until I had him there. So, yeah, that was okay. And then obviously these, I wouldn't really care about failing any of these. That was the important one to make the screen. This guy should have probably been there as well. Oh, but it was so that he could get there. Hmm. Oh well. So this was funny. He he actually apologized in chat here. It reminded me of Reservoir Dogs when he says if you kill me in your dream you're better. You better 
<laughs> Better wake up and apologize. <laughs> He's like, sorry. <laughs> sorry for killing. <laughs> sorry for killing Lord Tamatis. Brilliant. <laughs> German, that's sacrilege, isn't it, for a German a German to kill Matthias, but um <laughs> You know, I'd, I'd used his, I'd used his leader, so he was just, he was just a rookie then, wasn't he? So it didn't really matter. And then, base the ball, but again, it's, it's, it's a one in thirty-six, but it's a draw, I guess. If I fail this dodge, if I go for the dodge, I can't remember if I go for the dodge or not, or if I just blitz him away. But it's not, it's just not really worth it. Is I didn't even make the the one in thirty-six risk to draw. Because I don't have to, do I? Because that's the thing, I don't have to score again. I can just make... If, if this has been first half, maybe I maybe I try the dodge. But because I know I don't have to score, I can just uh, I can make it safe, use the blitz to hit him. And, uh, yep, cage back to the tree, yep. The tree's great, isn't it? Even, even, though, he, even, though, he, uh, even though he rooted turn one. Um... He's a, he's a hell of a cage corner. <laughs> Just quietly. Uh, to backyard Dodo in chat, um, definitely mighty blow. <laughs> yeah, so it's just it's just so hard for him, like you gotta you gotta feel for him because there's no there's just no good way to defend against this, is there? Especially as he needs his own scoring threat as well to try and make it. Like he can't just stop me scoring. He's got to try and get the uh return back somehow, hasn't he? I made a little bit of a misplay here. I wanted to three dice the ghoul with the tree and leave the tree still basing the uh, mummy. Um, but in my haste to protect the ball, I dodged this guy out and then regretted it. Um, but I mean, it, it worked out because I just got to hit the uh, I just got to hit the mummy on two dice. But it was obviously riskier hitting with two dice alone. It didn't matter because the cage was all right. But yeah, it did mean that I had the two dice with the loan instead of three dice. But it had the advantage of, if he wants to block him, it keeps him in contact with the tree. So it, it wasn't terrible. And it made him give him the three plus two plus out, which failed. It's okay. Now he's really running out of time now, isn't he? So he's really got to have a... He's really got to think about his scoring threats. I, I'm at the point where I could just be blitzing down his scoring threats now. I didn't think about that. I was thinking about keeping the ball safe and maybe getting forward to make it 2-0. Um, but I guess I should have been thinking about just how many scoring threats he had. Because it's pretty much just this guy. I could have maybe surfed him. Maybe he's, uh, maybe he's committing to try and surf that guy would have been the best play. But I think he did. I think he did a good job here. Another up, up skirt shot. What is it with uh, cyanide? Um, so yeah, the, this was pretty tricky actually. He had dodge. I guess I could have just. I don't know what. Did I do a dodge with this guy? Yeah. So I am making a one in thirty six risk, but at least it's better to to do it with him than dodge with him maybe. Not sure though, maybe the failure state's about the same. If I'd failed that dodge, he just hits me with tackle and guard, and it would have been pretty. I know the guard would. Yeah, he'd have hit me with guard and tackle, it would have still been horrible. So that was a pretty crucial 136 there. Yeah, I guess I should have hit this guy, because that's the only way he scores, really, isn't it? Maybe, maybe this one being movement 7, but I guess I should have maybe tried to, uh, tried to surf that guy. It would have maybe been better. As it was, I just make a bunch of dice rolls and <laughs> have things screened and <laughs> feeling pretty, pretty 
<laughs> pretty good about myself. But he, again, he does a good job of getting some pressure on here. I mean, I, I left this space on, didn't I? I think I used all three GFIs, but there is a space room to get, get guys through. But ultimately, it's still a 1 in 36, isn't it, to fail? Like 35 times out of 36, I still score. So, basing the ball isn't really, isn't doing a whole lot, is it? Needs me to fail the dodge and then him somehow get the long bomb to this guy. Ah, but I made this dodge. And then this block. <laughs> and then the blitz. So I guess the failure state is why I did that. So that, you know, if I fail the 1 in 36 dodge there, he's still got to get the ball off me. Um, so I didn't even do the dodge. So. There you go. Oh yeah, it's no. It was yeah. It's exactly exactly Madcam Two US. Yeah, he it was it was a it was an absolute nightmare game for him. Um, to be fair, I you know I got the I got the lucky sack, and uh, he didn't do as much damage as he would want. Um, and yeah, you know, there's, there's really there was really. It was, it's almost impossible, it's an almost impossible task to defend against Woodies when they're happy scoring whenever they want. Like, it's basically impossible. Because if he, if he, if I was trying to start, score on turn eight, and he knew I was trying to score on turn eight, then, um, or if he knew he wasn't one nil down. If he wasn't one nil down, he could push to try and stop me score. He could trust, push to try to turn me over. And if he fails and I score early, that's okay for him. Because he can score early back, can't he? he can, you know, but once once the scoring early is not an option anymore, it's just it's just an absolute nightmare against Al. So yeah, no criticism at all of uh, of Lardo there. No, it was uh, tough for him. And then got the blitz there for no no reason. And uh, there's no I, I, maybe he could have done a movement seven one turner here, but I don't know if. He probably um, he might be able to qualify with a loss actually, so maybe he should have done for the tiebreakers. I don't know exactly what the tiebreakers are here. He just fouls the tree for fun, but yeah, maybe he, sh he should have set up to try and do a one turn. He, he had a chance to reroll movement set. And then, and then a touchback in the end. So he really, he probably should have tried the one turn. There you go. A friendly foul to finish it. And we got and we got pretty even AV breaks, uh, but I outblocked him. That's the thing. I didn't get the early the early dodge fail to give him loads of hits, did I? I was pretty much limiting him to uh, to one blitz a turn, you know, pretty much. Apart from the the turns that I engaged to to get the ball off him, um, it was you know you can't really expect too many removals. Uh, though he was obviously unlucky with how many he got. You would have expected more than that from 30 blocks, I guess. Um, well, would you? 30 blocks, knock over about half the time. Um, and then break about half the time. So he probably wasn't even that unlucky on, on removals, actually. But he kind of has to get lucky on removals to have a chance. <laughs> uh, and not and I made loads of dodges. That's the thing. I made loads of dodges and just didn't really fail any. Um, you know, when they were crucial, I had the reroll. I didn't want in 36 any. That was the thing. If I had one in 36 to dodge, he would have had a chance, basically. But because I didn't, um, he didn't. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so like there was, there was, there were several turns where if I'd if I'd one in 36 an early dodge, it would have been it would have gone to terribly for me. So yeah, there there wasn't much he could have done. You know, no criticism of him whatsoever. Um, he made that slight gap when I got 
uh, slightly loose cage. Well, it wasn't really a loose cage, but there was just a slight opportunity, wasn't there? And then I thought that was the best I was going to get, and then went for it and and got lucky and got the uh, got the leap in the pow and uh, ran away with it. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.